Hey, what is up guys? My name is Eric, and in today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you about C strings in C++. Let's do this. Now, in a few episodes back, I taught you how to create strings in C++ by using the string library. Now, in today's topic, we're going to be talking about C strings, which is similar to strings, but they're actually different a little. Now, what makes the two different is that C strings ends with a no character, whereas in a string, they don't have a no character at the end. So what this means is that if you were to do a character count on how many characters are inside of a C string, there's going to be one additional character and that is the no character. So let's say you store the word cat inside C string, then it won't be three characters. In fact, it would be four because the fourth character is the no character represented by a backslash zero. Now, if you were to store a cat, inside a string, it would be three characters long because strings don't have a no character. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, what is a no character anyways? What is it doing here in a C string? So what the no character is doing in a C string is it basically tells the program that this is the end of the line for this particular string, or shall I say C string, because the no character is basically acting like the period inside of a sentence. It tells you that Okay, this is the end of the line. Now, if you want to use methods or functions that come with C strings, you would have to include the C string library as shown above right here. Include and then angle brackets and then C string. Now, to keep this tutorial simple, we're not going to be using that library at all. In fact, you could just delete it and you could still create a C string. Now, as I've said before in the past that strings are basically an array of characters. However, it doesn't mean that you can create any old array of characters and you'll get a C string. In fact, you have to make sure you add that no character to the end of your character array. Otherwise, it will not be considered a C string. Now, there are four methods of initializing a C string, but today we're going to keep it simple and focus on three of them. So in the first method, we're going to focus on the array initialization method. So what this does is first off, let's type in character and then we'll give our array a name. So let's say CS1 and then inside the square brackets, let's give a number four and then equals and then curly brackets, semicolon and then inside single quotes, let's say cat. So C A T. And then the fourth element will be our no character. Otherwise, it's going to be considered a regular string. But in this case, to make it a C string, we add the no character in as shown. So if we were to see out this character array, see out CS1 and line, and then compile and run the program, it should show the value of cat. And as you can see, the console window shows the word cat, which is exactly what we want it to be. Now, in method two, we're going to be initializing our C string by using the shortcut array initialization method. So what this means is, let's create an array first. So CS2 this time, and let's call it four at the same time. Equals, and then this time, instead of using curly brackets, you would use double quotation marks. And then a semicolon, and inside the double quotation marks, let's type in cat. So just to keep it consistent. So to keep things less confusing, I'll comment out the first CL line of code. So if we were to see out CS2 followed by N line, it should show cat as the result. So the output would be the exact same thing, except we're only going to be using it by the shortcut array initialization method. Now by doing it this way, it is implied that there's going to be a no character inside of it. So yeah. So if we were to run and compile this program, it should show cat. And as you can see, it does. Let's comment that out and let's look at method three. And that is the empty case. So let's say we don't assign any value to it. Let's say we keep it blank. So in the method three, which is the empty scenario, which basically means that there is nothing assigned to our character array, the only elements or the only value that's inside of a empty character array for a C string is just the no character by itself, which basically translates to nothing being displayed on the screen. So let's create a character array that will do just that. So CS3, empty brackets, and then empty quotation marks. And then let's see out CS3 and then end line. So in that case, we should only see a empty line followed by the end program line. And as you can see, it shows nothing at all followed by the end program line. Perfect. So it does exactly what we wanted it to be. So because it's blank, the only thing inside of here is really just a no character. 
so as stated in the comments. And now the fourth method is actually using pointers but we won't go into that today because I've never covered the topic of pointers in the previous episodes so stay tuned for when that comes out. And that really concludes today's tutorial on C strings versus strings in C++. And as a quick refresher, C strings again ends with a no character whereas a regular string does not end with a no character. Thank you for watching and please like the video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time.